Good evening, good evening. Folks are coming on. It's so wonderful to see familiar faces and new faces and smiling faces and bright eyes. It really, really is good. We're going to get started. My name is Michelle Chatman. I am honored to serve as the chair of the board for the Center for Contemplative Mind and Society. And I am so delighted to share a part of this evening with you as we honor and celebrate our love and our memories of Dr. Oliver W. Hill, Jr. My friend, my baba, my comrade, my colleague. And it feels so right to do this as a family and as a community. Before we move forward, I want to do something maybe a little bit unorthodox for this Zoom space. And I want to ask everyone to unmute and just say hi so we can hear some voices. <laughs> One, two, three, let's do it. Hey, there. hey. Hello, everyone. Hey. Hello, hello, hello. Hello, hello. 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 Hi. hi. Hi, everyone. Hey. Hi. 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 with you hi. all. Hi. Yeah. Hey, wow. Stephanie. Uh, hi, love. Hey. Hi, Beth. Stephanie. Hi, Lisa. Hello. Hello. Good to Hello, see everybody. you all. Hello. Hello. Mm -hmm. So if we were in physical space, this is what it would feel like and look like. Hey, hello. It's look at this. Hugs and maybe fist bumps or elbow bumps or hip bumps or whatever, whatever. But it would be. <laughs> <laughs> beautiful cacophony of hugs and smiles mm. and love and exchange of energy. And we can keep that going, although we're in a different time and space. We can still put that energy out there. So thank you so very yes. much for that. Mm. Maya is going to be sort of driving <laughs> this bus for us this evening. Um, I think we wanted to begin with a practice offered by our beloved Oliver Hill, a recorded practice. So Maya, I'm going to turn it over to you so that we can center with our friend. My name is Oliver Hill. I'm a retired professor of psychology at Virginia State University. And I'm currently a member of the board of C-Mind. We're living in a time of unprecedented stress from the anxiety and isolation of the COVID-19 pandemic, oh. the outrage and anger at the senseless killing of Black people in the name of law enforcement, to the disgust with leaders who seek to stoke the fires of division instead of healing. I'd like to offer you a practice today, not to remove justified anger or pain, but as a way to hold and honor those emotions without them becoming debilitating and preventing us from doing the healing work that must be done. I grew up in the 1950s in the segregated South. My father was a prominent civil rights attorney and our family would receive daily death threats. We even had a cross burn in our yard one year. The idea of the necessary struggle for social justice was instilled in me from this early age. This activism was stoked further as a student at Howard University in the 1960s, which at that time was a major epicenter of black political thought and liberation movements. One day, while I was at Howard, I had what I would now call a transpersonal experience, one that changed my life completely. I was walking around Rock Creek Park in the center of DC on what was a perfect spring day. Suddenly my awareness seemed to expand and I lost all sense of ego boundaries. It was the proverbial experience of being one with the universe. There was no sense of me, just this ocean of bliss and absolute peace and an awareness of the interconnection of everything and everyone. It lasted for what seemed like an eternity, but then I could feel gradually old constrictions starting to reappear in my awareness. It was as if limiting thoughts were gathering together 
and reconstructing my old separate sense of self. Soon it was over and I was back to my sense of me. I was both ecstatic from the experience, but also devastated that it hadn't lasted. I immediately set out on a journey to try and understand what had happened to me, and most importantly, to replicate it. This investigation soon led me to the path of meditation. Meditation was originally developed not as a treatment modality for stress, but as a means to experience the depths of consciousness beyond the thinking level of the mind. It's not a tool for suppressing emotion, but a method for becoming anchored in a deeper level of being so that we are not buffeted about by our emotions. This gives us the ability to do the work that must be done from a place of love and compassion rather than a place of anger and othering. So let's do a simple meditation practice now. So first, find a comfortable posture where your back is comfortably upright. Take a few full breaths in and out. Feel your body start to relax. And you can gently close your eyes if you haven't done so. And start by just noticing the contents of your awareness the thoughts, the feelings, the sensations. If you're feeling anger, notice the texture of your anger, the visceral sensation of your feelings of hurt and pain. Don't interfere, just witness what's there. Now, let your awareness expand to the connection with your surroundings. Feel rooted to the seat below you and the earth beneath you. Feel the strength and stability that comes from your connection to the earth. Become aware of the web of relationships in your life and the strength that comes from that connection. You can start with your immediate relations, but then imagine that web expanding all the way back to a common ancestor for all of humanity. Feel the strength that comes from that sense of connection. Now have a sense of expansiveness in your inner space. Entertain the idea that there are no boundaries to your awareness. And let's just sit for a moment with this sense of boundlessness. Now you can begin to slowly bring yourself out of meditation. Take a few breaths again. And when it feels comfortable, you can open your eyes.
So I invite you to try this practice again for an extended period of time on your own. And the steps are, first, take a comfortable upright posture. Take a few full breaths in and out. And then just witness the, conscious, the contents of your awareness without judgment or censorship. Cultivate the sense of the web of connections between you and everyone and everything in your life. And then finally, you can have the sense of the unboundedness of consciousness. No limits to your awareness. A practice like this once or twice a day helps us to stay connected to the source of love and compassion within which then becomes the source of power for fighting for peace and justice in the world. My personal path of meditation is called Siddha Yoga. If you'd like to know more about this path and my teacher, Guru Mai Chidvalasananda, you can go to www.siddhayoga.org. That's S-I-D-D-H-A-Y-O-G-A. Dot org. Thank you so much for your participation today. And may your meditations bear great fruit and support your healing and loving actions in the world. Thank you, my dear sister, teacher, friend, Dr. Chapman, Michelle, and like you, I lift up with a grateful heart appreciation for uh, our friend and teacher co-journeyer on the path oliver w hill hello everybody i'm rhonda it's 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 good to be with you it's really um you know bittersweet poignant and uh, to be gathering in reflection on on the life of a friend who we loved and whose work inspired us and so i'm uh i'm, I'm aware of all the different the all of the richness in the room and really grateful that we have this chance to be together um I have the many of you I haven't seen in person in a long time and haven't even had the chance to see your beautiful faces on zoom in too long. So part of me just wants to sit and take take in drink in this this community that was a part of Oliver's life, Dr. Hill's life. Um, I had the pleasure of serving on the board of the Center for Contemplative Mind and Society for a number of years, including years in which we were fortunate to have Oliver join us. And I remember meeting him at Howard University at an event um, that we had pulled together there um, prior to the bigger event that we did, the conference that we did there. We did a small convening there where I met Oliver for the first time and you know i'm sure and i'm sure you understand the spirit in which i mean this when i say i just immediately fell in love with that loving aura that um is the spirit of oliver <laughs> y'all know what i'm talking about you know he literally was a beautiful human being in every sense of the word And so, yes, we were grateful to have him when he said yes to joining us and say, working with us on the board. Um, but I'll say as a child of, of the state of Virginia, you know, I was born in North Carolina, but raised in Virginia. Um, you know, when I met him, the first, it could be sound a little strange. The first thing I remember thinking was this name is familiar. And it was familiar because 
his father's name was familiar. Now his father's name might have been in a right world, a good world, a just world. His father's name would have been familiar to all children and adults, perhaps across the land, but certainly in the state of Virginia because of his great work as a civil rights pioneer. And no, in snow, no, it is no exaggeration to say that his work helped create the possibility for me being here by his work to integrate the schools, the public schools of Virginia with, as a lawyer, a civil rights lawyer and litigator, as Oliver mentioned. But we didn't learn his name in school as we should have. I learned his name because I went to the University of Virginia, again, as a result of that prior work by his father and others. But as a student there, the cafeteria that I went to actually was named after his father. The cafeteria on the grounds of the University of Virginia was named after his father. So though we weren't being taught about him, his name was in the air. Which is, a, you know, again, the mixed bag of, you, you know what it's like to live in this country. <laughs> So I'm grateful that at least I had that touchstone and so that when we met, I could learn a little bit more about this, this Oliver Hill and to learn it from his son, from my friend Oliver was just a beautiful gift. And, and I just wanna say that one of the things I remember, I remember presenting with Oliver at a conference um, uh, hosted, sponsored by Mind and Life uh, the institute that helps, as you all know, support um, the research, scholarship, and teaching community around contemplative sciences. And of course, Oliver was a, a well-respected figure in that community and the network that flows out of that as well. But I really remember the moment where we were, where we were on our panel and the spirit of the contribution that he was making, it was very clear that a concern that he wanted to make sure we heard was about the way that our, again, genuine and rightly held fear and concern about the future. This was right around the time, as I recall it, I think I'm recalling this correctly, that it was right around the time of the election of our current president. I'm sorry, our, our prior president. Whew. Sorry, the prior president. And there was a lot of fear and concern in the air. And I just remember the, 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 the thrust of his comments were to say, remember the oneness. Don't forget this. Do this work of justice, but do it in a way that reminds us every step of the way that we're much, much bigger, much more connected, much more loving and much more capable. So he was in this beautiful way, in my view, the dream of his father of freedom and spoke to it and lived it, having actually inherited, you know, that ability to speak and fight for what we imagine as a dream rather than fighting against what had held us back. So I um, continue to draw inspiration and um, resonating love from the memory of that. And I share it and offer it to all of you. And I just wanna say here publicly, I, this is the first time I'm seeing Dr. Hill, Dr. Renee Hill, uh, since Oliver's passing, my dear. I just wanna say condolences and love to you. Condolences and love to you for your loving connection with all of us, your being here. Uh, that was another, let me just, I'm closing here, but I'll just say that was another beautiful in, way in which I was impacted by Oliver seeing the two of you together and knowing how much he cared about you and the family. Um, so I just want to um, thank you all for being here with much respect much appreciation for all of you. May we continue the one good work, the one beautiful work. May you be well on, on your journey.
Thank you, my sister, my friend, Rhonda Lee Libby. Tonight will be an evening of sharing and stories and memories and laughter and perhaps a few tears in music. It will be all of that because we feel all of that and we are one in all of that. And before I turn it over to my board vice chair, Linwood Heyman, I was reminded of an experience I had with Oliver just today. A few years ago, Stephanie Briggs was organizing these retreats for faculty of color. And she found this house in the middle of, I don't even know where, I think it was Virginia. I just know it took me longer to get there than it probably should have. And I was following directions. But we went to this house and that is where I met Dr. Cheryl Talley and a couple of other folks and Renee and Oliver were there. And it was fabulous. We brought so much food. You would have thought we were not leaving that house. It was only like a two day retreat. But we arrive at this place, a lovely little house and we cooked and we drank wine and we, we just had a ball into the night, into the night. So folks are getting sleepy, but not me. You know, and this is not an ageist comment, but I was the youngest in the group. And I'm like, I want to stay up. I want to watch a movie. Renee's like, I'm going to bed. Other people are like, it is late, girl. <laughs> it's time to retire. I said, let me see what movie is playing. And you know, the house didn't have Netflix or anything. They had some kind of cable situation. And there was this old, horrible, like B, C, D rated horror apocalyptic movie. And I said, oh, I found a movie. Who's going to stay up and watch it with me? Well, you know, nobody except Oliver W. Hill. I said, Oliver, are you going to stay up and watch this movie? Yeah, why not? And that really is emblematic of how Oliver showed up in my life. Why not? I'm not sleeping. Let's go for it. That was his spirit. That was his energy. Justice work to do, let's go for it. Let's sit and get grounded and reoriented, let's go for it. Uh, let's hang out and watch a late movie and eat some snacks that we shouldn't, let's go for it. Oliver, you got five minutes, I need to just process something. All right, give me 10, then let's go for it. That's how he showed up. And in many ways, that's how he continues to show up in my life and my prayers and my meditations and my requests for his guidance as I sit on this board. And I tried to find the name of that awful movie and I couldn't find it, but when I find it, I'm gonna get it out to you all. Just wanted to share that delightful, delightful memory. Linwood, over to you. Well, good evening, everyone. It is my distinct honor and privilege to be here sharing space with you all this evening. Um, Dr. Hill, Renee, um, it is so great to be in your presence again. Um, I don't think I've seen you since 1440 um, when we were when we were in California. It's been, and I, th I think that was the last time I saw you as well, Bronda. Um, so much like yourself, this is quite a a, a reunion. And as I think about um, uh, the reason for this reunion, the only thing I can say, of course, it's because of Oliver. And for me, especially at this time in my life where I feel as though a, a teacher would be greatly appreciated, meaning life right now is replete with lessons. Life right now is replete with experiences that are challenging to process. Life right now is full of interactions that would be very, very helpful to speak with a sage who does not consider themselves as such. I don't want to present the notion that I don't have 
access to such teachers because at least three of them are on this call right now. And yet from a, from a black male perspective, that wisdom, having access to his lineage of wisdom is much appreciated. And the reason why I say much in the present tense is because I had an experience the other day where I came across some material that was, um, it was from a teacher that is no longer with us. It was a book. And I was saying to one of my loved ones, who's also on this call, you know, I think that my teacher, or at least one of my teachers, they maybe then they're, they're not alive. She was like, yeah, I mean, yeah, as if to say, duh. <laughs> and so in thinking about Oliver and then thinking about the lessons that I learned from him, I have the, the privilege and in some ways the sadness to say that most of the lessons from him I didn't learn until his passing. One of the most profound interactions that, <laughs> that he and I had, which it just brings me all kinds of joy because um, my, my grandfather's had long passed away, but the last board meeting that <laughs> Oliver was at with, um, with us was at um, the Garrison Institute. And there was one night I was, you know, I woke up to use the bathroom and uh, Oliver was, was just coming out and it was dark. And I mean, he was clearly just coming from bed himself and he didn't have his glasses on. And I, I can't remember if I had my glasses on or not. And we both startled each other. It was like, hey, hey, oh, hey. <laughs> when, we went into, <laughs> when we went into this bathroom and we both saw each other, it was like, hey, like I, I know you're supposed to be here, but I was not expecting to see you here at this place at this time. And then he, you know, he didn't have his glasses on again, but I guess, you know, he knew before. He said, hey, Linwood, yeah. He said, all right, have a good night. <laughs> Hopefully he had, a, you know, an easy time getting back to sleep. But in thinking about how we run into wisdom, in thinking about how we come across wisdom, in thinking about the many, many, many times that we are presented with wisdom, that we are presented with love, that we are presented with compassion. It is often so striking initially that it is hard to embrace. And we don't realize the significance of that serendipitous instance until it's already passed. And so I'm thinking about the lessons that I now sit in the privilege to have learned from Brother Oliver and the lessons that I'm realizing that he learned from his father and from his cohort. And I'm thinking about just the extreme privilege of those few moments, those few interactions that we had where I was able to be inserted into this long line that goes both into the past and into the future of wise beings who are committed, dedicated, and absolutely consumed with seeing this world be a better place. And so having this opportunity here right now to say these words, to say anything, is nothing short of an honor. Because again, I am quite sure <laughs> that Oliver probably would have said, no, nah, y'all don't have to do all this. <laughs> not, not, you know, it, it doesn't have to be about me. But of course, of course, of course, it is about you. And I, much like everyone else here, am so grateful to still be in your presence. 
I am so grateful to have had the privilege to have learned from you and to have the esteemed privilege of continuing to learn from you. To the Hill family, I wish you my humblest condolences, but an un, un, undying source of love and compassion. Should you ever need anything, please do not hesitate to call. I'm from the Delmarva Peninsula, so while I can't claim Virginia incomplete, you know, I'm in that, that little tip of Maryland where, you know, I'm right, right up the road from y'all. So <laughs> if y'all need anything, please, please, please do not hesitate to call on me. I love you. Mm. Mm. I think, I think I'm next. And Lynn, I just have to say that that meeting, when we were at Garrison the night before a dinner or something, you know, I was saying, oh, I've been having terrible trouble sleeping. And, but I've been taking these wonderful little, uh, uh, what's it called? A CBD uh, with gummies. And, and Oliver said, <laughs> yeah. Oliver said, oh gosh, I'm having trouble sleeping too. Um, so uh, I said, I've got an extra one. And David's here, he was there too. Uh, I'll give it to you. So I gave it to him. And then the next morning he said, oh, thank you so much. That really helped me. And now I realize that he <laughs> He saw you and he went back to his room and probably thought I'll never get back to sleep, but he did. <laughs> so everyone, this is, first of all, it's really hard to talk about. I said this to Renee, it's hard to talk about Oliver without Renee. I mean, I first met them as, um, Contemplative Practice Fellows, along with Cheryl Banks Smith, who's here tonight. How cool! Um, and um, in 1999, and they were both really important. I want you to know this to the growth of the program and the center. Key, and um, and so I will try to focus on Oliver, whom I love. And I was just, um, I was just. I have, a, I have a table of ancestors, dear friends who have died, pictures. And of course, Oliver is there. And um, so I visit him every day. But um, I remember that when, as we were both getting old, I am still getting old, he escaped this. <laughs> um, we used to joke about being ancestors in training, <laughs> but, but now Oliver is a real ancestor. And um, he, he, he was so important. He, he brought not just enthusiasm and skill, which lots of people have, but um, wisdom and fearlessness. And, you know, it was so important to me that he was always a voice for going beyond silence, meditation, um, and we saw it in the practice tonight, to transformation, to transforming ourselves, our students, and society. And um, uh, making good trouble. I loved being with him. I trusted him completely. And whenever he was in the room, I, I felt like somebody was holding that like, incredible integrity um, that is the reason we're doing these practices in the first place. Um, I knew, I knew that he knew and he wasn't going to um, let things go. So I found a few, I went back and looked at all these reports and things of, with, uh, of where Oliver was at all these great meetings that we had, including 1440. And um, I found some quotes from him that I wanna share with you because I think they're really good. He was amazing. 
our goal, he said, is to transform the individual. The way it's set up now, he's talking about higher education, the system is set up for ego enhancement, bringing in a bunch of adjuncts to compete with each other, to see who's going to get the tenure track job. I think for us, we need to find a way to go beyond the ego because ego is the ultimate otherizer. The basis of contemplative practices is to expand the sense of self to move beyond the other. I'm not sure what else needs to be done other than spreading our presence in the academy. One thing that came up at a CMIME board meeting was having these satellite organizations through the country harnessing their energies to bring about good in the world. We've done 20 years of efficacy studies. We know contemplative practices work. So I think our mere presence at our institutions is helping that process of change. But we need to step out of the old way of being the scholar, which is deeply egoic, and to move beyond that heart, beyond ego. At another time, he said, I'm so thirsty. Oh. At another time, he said, we need to have deeper immersive experiences. <laughs> Sorry. Um, such as retreats. Instead of just having students meditate in our classes for a few minutes. And I want to end this was in the middle of a meeting. I wanted to push back on something David Germano said, his notion of no timeless wisdom. Yes, all practices take place in a context, but they do all come back to knowing the knower. That is the commonality that all traditions have, a focus on seeing and knowing consciousness. Mm. Then, there are, I found a few quotes in this great report that Renee wrote of the um, meeting that we had at Howard about um, the African American community and higher education and how we could, which is a, a real seed meeting for, for the direction we're going in now. Beautiful. I'm reading this, I'm, I'm looking at a picture of Rhonda on the page that I'm reading it from and appreciating Renee. But Oliver said, he was so cool and that he would, you know, he, everything in life, he understood as like interconnected, you know? He, he said, students are, what practices would be good? We would discuss, I wasn't there. What a surprise. It was for all people of color, African-American people. Um, but he said, um, the discussion was around what practices for our students, you know. He said, students are very familiar with spoken word practice, of course, but he said it. Um, spoken word practices can be a way of reintegrating their persons if it is done consciously and done as a deep practice. So like shifting a students from just speaking the word to recognizing the way in which it was a practice. That was brilliant. Um, he said also, I mean, he would say things that everyone in the room would say, yes, of course, thank you for saying it. We need to talk about suffering, he said, and how these experiences are valuable we grow through these experiences, kind of like the blues as contemplation as suffering. Yeah. Um, most people were just saying, how can I teach mindfulness to my students? <laughs> Not Oliver. Oliver, we need to make the connection between religion, spirituality, and our actions and daily lives more explicit. That's been, you know, a discussion we've been having from the beginning about, you know, ethics and morals in these practices. Um, uh, he's, and this, this is just brought it down to earth. Even those students who have religion in their class will cheat on a test. 
we got to make that connection. So I just wanted to share that. He's one of the great beings and I really love him and was reminded watching that meditation tonight. What a blessing. Oh, I know. I wanted to read these four lines because, you know, he had a um, teacher from India, was from a long line of great teachers in India. And the Bhagavad Gita is the um, essence text. But this is a sweet four lines about dying and after death. Never the spirit was born, the spirit shall cease to be never. Never was time, it was not. End and beginning are dreams. Thank you. Well, thank you so much, Mirabai, and everybody who has spoken so, so beautifully. I'm, it's wonderful to be here with all of you. Um, um, you know, when we were first planning this event, um, I wasn't sure what I could possibly say. And in fact, having heard all of this, I don't know how much I have to add. But the more I thought about it in preparation, the more I thought, well, actually probably have a lot to say. And then I realized that I didn't have a lot of time to say it. So I actually wrote out my remarks just to keep them uh, rather short. So if you don't mind, um, I'm going to read what, what, what I prepared. Really, it's so wonderful to be here. That's not on my little script here. I just want to say how mm -hmm. wonderful it feels. Thank you, everybody. And thank you, Rhonda, for being here. I realize you have to leave. Um, I'm looking forward to hearing other people um, uh, very soon. Anyway, I'm so pleased to be able to say a few words celebrating and honoring Oliver. I got to know him over the years of my involvement with Sea Mind, first as a community member and a fellow, and then over the six years ending a year ago, I, I might say with his death, um, when we both when both had the privilege of serving on the Sea Mind Board of Directors, we we came onto the board at the same time, actually. When I think of Oliver, the first thing that comes to mind is his inner beauty, which is exactly what Rhonda had said. His inner beauty combined, of course, and expressed through his outer beauty as well. Um, an inner radiance, which could so easily be seen and felt and taken in, and which he shared with me as I know he shared with everybody else, just by our being in his presence. That sense of being at peace, at everything ultimately and most deeply being all right. In fact, more than all right, actually quite wonderful. But a sense of all rightness that didn't deny all that was and is at the same time, not right with the world not wonderful, that cheerful sense, that cheerful sense of hope and possibility, which clearly came from a very deep place, a very deep place of knowing and experience. I think of the wonderful conversations I had with him, sometimes about sea mind business, sometimes about non-dual awareness, a topic that was really of great interest to both of us, sometimes stemming from his curios curiosity about my Jewish tradition. But I also think of the silent times we shared. For example, I remember a time, a very ordinary ta time, walking from UMass Amherst back into town in silence. A silence that was alive with shared connection. In discussions of Seamine's future, which we all have had many of during the time that we were both on the board, Oliver would often bring us back to contemplative mind, those two words. I know everybody will, will recognize that. 
not the organization, our, our organization by that name, but the quality or qualities of mind that we try to cultivate through our contemplative practice. Qualities such as flexibility, perspective, compassion, understanding, and of course we could extend that list on and on. It was a wonderful wake up call for me every time he invoked the phrase contemplative mind in that way. But what he also made clear both in his words and his deeds was that contemplative mind was not separate from action, not separate from social action in particular. And so contemplation needed to be active and activism in order to be effective needed to be contemplative. I think that's one of the great teachings that, that um, Oliver offered all of us and that will continue to speak for the years and the generations ahead, right? That, that contemplation needs to be active and action needs to be contemplative. As I reflect back on the time I was privileged to know him, I realized that Oliver was continually modeling the qualities of a contemplative mind that he had cultivated over 50 years of practice. This was an extraordinary gift to me and I'm sure to many others. There's a beautiful line from Jewish tradition that says, we best pay homage to those we've lost when we live our lives most fully, even in the shadow of their loss. In, in effect, we celebrate and honor them by, in a, by carrying on the fullness of our lives, bringing to bear and having, trying to integrate the teachings and the gifts that that person, that, that Oliver offered us. And so, and this is where I want to end. Perhaps I, I feel for myself, and maybe some of you might join me in this. I feel that I can best celebrate and honor dear Oliver by practicing the qualities of contemplative mind and contemplative social action that he devoted his life to. I love you, Oliver. I miss you. I'm so grateful to have known you and to continue to know you and to feel your presence even now. Thank you, everyone. Peace and love, everybody. Can you hear me? So I'm going to speak about, what's up, Dr. Hill? <laughs> I'm going to speak about um, Dr. Oliver Hill as a former student. Um, so I met him at Virginia State University. I was an undergrad and he had a student who was doing research on like psychics. This was at an HBCU in the 70s. And so he had this student who was doing research on um, other students who have psychic abilities. And so he developed this way to measure it. And I had this rep on campus for being into yoga and, you know, being this cosmic guy and everything. So um, his student was like, yo, man, you got to do this test. We want to like see, see what level you're on and everything. And so I was um, in the psych department at the time I was still trying, I think I was trying to figure out what I wanted to major in. I probably had majored in psychology dropped major in political science, on and on and on. Anyway, so um, I went in feeling kind of confident, like, you know, my psychic scores would be off the charts and everything. And when I um, went to do the test, it was like nil. It was like I wasn't really psychic, even though, you know, I knew I had these abilities. And I remember his student was like so disappointed and everything, but, um, Dr. Hill just had like this cool, calm vibe where I still felt like, um, you know, even though as a black male, my psyche, my body was under assault, he just made me feel like uh, you're gifted, you are talented, and you have unlimited potential. 
And then later on, after um, I graduated, I was a professional, he asked me to come talk to one of, his, one of his classes. So I went and spoke to his class, and I really talked to him about my, my journey from being a, a failed psychic <laughs> to um, someone who I think exemplified what he would want to see in a mentee. And so I came and spoke to his class. And um, through my talk, uh, I identified myself. And he had, he had so much uh, fun with this. I identified myself through my journey as an Afro-Hindu Catholic yogi. And he used to always like, Ram is an Afro-Hindu Catholic yogi. And he always encouraged me. Um, he would always talk about the work I did through Drums No Guns Foundation. And he would always just like prop me up and, and push my work out to the community. And so his message today was really timely because um, in the current climate, I am not feeling a lot of love and compassion. I'm actually feeling a lot of anger and rage. So I appreciate hearing that message today because I need to embody that. And so I want to devote two things to him. This one piece, um, I'm going to share in the chat something that you can recite as I play it. There is a purpose for this game of life. Our time on earth is temporary. The supreme plan, the supreme being has no flaws, but the piece that you can recite is, I am eternal bliss, your physical presence is missed. I am eternal bliss, your physical presence is missed. I am eternal bliss, you are truth, knowledge, and bliss. And then I'm gonna go into the drum and I'm gonna be chanting um, Om Namah. Om Namaya, Om Namah Shivaya, Om Namah Shivaya, and I'll just fade out after that. So I'm going to have to move my camera back a little bit while I play um, this. And while I'm playing it, I am eternal bliss. Your physical presence is miss dot, 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 until you are truth, knowledge, and bliss. And just let me know if you can, if you can hear it.
Thank you, Afro Hindu, Catholic, uh, etc., etc. <laughs> <laughs> Love you, Brother Ram. Thank you so much. Thank you. <sighs> I want to invite my dear sister friend, Dr. Renee Hill, to say some words, and then we will open it up for uh, a few of you to share. I think we have time to hear from from a few of you. Thank you, my dear. I, could y'all like go easy with the doctor thing? I mean, really, y'all are hitting that hard. <laughs> I would like to just really thank everyone and I extend my love to all of you. The Hill family is so overwhelmed by all this stuff. You guys want to get in the picture here? Yes, thank you. Yeah, thank you for everything. Thank you but for everything. Really Wonderful words. <laughs> Wonderful words. Awesome performance. Yes. Okay. All right, y'all are good. Y'all are good. Okay. Um, thank you so much to C Mind which has inspired us, supported us, supported our careers, and to which Oliver was devoted. Thank you so much for all of this. The words, uh -oh, there go the dogs. Your words have been so touching. I think, can you take, can you take, thank you. Yeah, this is unscripted. One of the projects that Oliver had planned to complete was to write about how we should lessen the acrimony in our discourse. How we needed to hold our space, support and protect those who are vulnerable, all without name calling, sarcasm or meanness on our part. He read all of the letters to the editor in our local paper. Even the ones calling for an end to science or claiming that the South had won the Civil War. And he would occasionally pin a response, a response he would reread and reword, to make sure he was answering them respectfully. Oliver's spiritual grounding and beliefs were, were rock solid. He was everlastingly kind and patient although I did manage to test it a few times. And this belief that we are all divine, whether we know it or not, whether we act like it or not, was unshakable. And even though if I were seated across the table from some people in our country, I would be sorely tempted to flip my mashed potatoes into their faces. I am trying to live up to his standard and our shared spiritual beliefs. He was never able to write that article, but I can instantiate those beliefs to the best of my ability. One of my meditation teachers likened us to tuning forks that our state resonates to those around us. Adrian Marie Brown writes that we're not fighting this one battle in front of us. We're erecting a whole new society that means that the path to building our new inclusive society must be paved with the same values on which it will operate. We must treat the other with respect and compassion, even as we say, no, not one step further. That simultaneously, simultaneous commitment to justice and to honor. And I thank and love you all. Thank you, Renee. No doctor. <laughs> I'd like to share that the Center for Contemplative Mind and Society is launching a Love in Action Award in honor of 
Dr. Oliver Hill. <laughs> this award will acknowledge an individual whose work lives and thrives and stands at the intersection of contemplative work and social justice. We are raising funds to support this award. We have um, graciously been gifted a $1,000 gift to begin seeding this award. Um, I am committing tonight to a $500 commitment for this award. We hope to honor a scholar, activist, contemplative in the spring of 2022 and offer it as a weekend, a, a day where we honor Oliver's life with service, with contemplative action, with social justice. And then our awardee, our recipient will offer perhaps a virtual program or lecture. We're still working it out. It is evolving and I am sure that it will unfold and evolve in the most splendid and fitting way. But this is one of the ways that we wish to honor the life of our dear Oliver. If you are interested and able in supporting this effort and contributing, we would love that. Just reach out to us. Um, you can email Maya. <laughs> Thank you, Maya. <laughs> Unscripted. <laughs> and uh, we would we would so very much appreciate your support. I want to open the floor for other comments, but if you would just indulge me for another moment, I want to offer a singing meditation. I know that Oliver enjoyed uh, music and, and he enjoyed my singing and he enjoyed expanding the ways that we think about and experience contemplative approaches. And his affirmation and support of the ways that I um, share contemplative approaches was just so inspiring for me. So I call this the one us meditation. I am here. I am one, I am worthy, I am enough, you are here.
the floor is open and I know that many of you have much that you could share. And we want to hear from as many of you as time would allow. Or if you want to hang out like Oliver hung out with me to watch the Bora B movie, I'm down for that. But um, perhaps you can raise your hand or just wave so we can recognize you and you can make a few brief comments. And Maya said that you should be able to unmute and just share out loud. So let's go for it. <laughs> Thank you, Maya. Hello, everybody. Um, I'm not quite sure what I'm going to say, but I just really feel moved to put my voice in here. And um, although a, a little shaky following that amazing song, I just love, love, love hearing your voice, Michelle. Oh, this is really, really moving to be here and um, to be with, uh, there's, there's a lot of faces, people here who are dear to me. And, um, and I just will say, I got to know our, um, I got to know Oliver as a fellow board member on C-Mind. And I just over the last, I don't know, as this time has been passing, I have just had this vivid sense of seeing him sitting across from me at the table, at the boardroom table. And it just brings back such vivid memories of, of how happy I would be when the gods of chance and, and um, seating arrangement would land me sitting across from Oliver. And I would just feel so good the whole meeting long. And every time I'd, I, would, I would notice David, you spoke about silence. I would notice that he, he was not necessarily the most frequent contributor, but in his quiet, poof, boy, did he contribute. And I would just sort of soak it up and feel like, who someone else said this, like everything's gonna be okay. I would feel like a root, a root grounding and a sense of, yeah, that what we were doing, our little group sitting around a table, it was important. It's like, this is important. We don't have to be loud about it, but we can know it's important. And, uh, and then when he would speak, oh my goodness. So when he would speak, like everyone, everyone would just turn and listen. And, and no matter, even if it was something really serious, he'd have like this little twinkle in his eye, this little a kind of smile as he finished speaking. And then you could just kind of, let we would just like let what he spoke sort of arrive in us and and feel how it would change change the room so i feel really um just thrilled to be here sad for his not being here with us and 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 in an experience like this it really feels like we remember he is still with us. He is still with us. And um, I just and I just want to name echo a word um, that what he spoke in that meditation he led at the beginning tonight. And it was how he spoke of the web, how he spoke of, of this sense of, of us all being connected. And and tonight really affirms this in a way. It's what I just feel so grateful for my um, 
involvement and um, in, with Sea Mind, that this is a place where that we can really feel our, our, our webbed connection and, um, and to feel that, of course, it includes him, it includes those who aren't with us, but boy, do we ever need them and feel their loving presence and guidance. Thank you all. Okay. Mene. Thinking about I've been coming across like tons of photos of Oliver. And I realized how much time we all spent together. I mean, I realized that there was a point where I thought I could come and live with you because you took in everybody and I was kind of feeling orphaned and I needed a family. And I realized you couldn't be my parents because you really could only be my siblings. But I was going to accept that as truth, in fact. Um, you know how I said how much I was going to come and just live with you. But, you know, I was thinking, so all these pictures keep coming up. I, I, I see Oliver in these photos in you know, the house that Michelle was talking about when we were uh, by the fireplace up in the mountains in the other, the other lodge. And when we were at this other place with all the jacuzzis, um, you know, together. And what I always loved about you all was like, y'all would just drive three and a half hours like you were just going down the street. And, and I, I don't know. I, I, when I'm thinking about you, I'm just, I, there's such joy. I, 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 you know, there's such joy listening to everybody talk about Oliver. And I, I think about the joy. I think about when you, he cared for our students from the Community College of Baltimore County when we came to your um, meditation space and something was going on at the school and we, didn't know what we were going to do and Oliver set it up so we had a place to stay. My students love being in the hotel. They couldn't believe it could get any better than that. And um, but Oliver took care of us. And, and finally, the last thing I want to say about Oliver is that when I said I was moving to Kansas City, Missouri, he was the only person who ever said, I love Kansas City. And he meant it. So um, I miss Oliver. I miss him. But you know, he's here. He's here. Um, always will be. And um, I love you, Renee. And I hope you still play in the harp. <laughs> love you. Amea yes, Pintia Willelik, Hong Harvin Yudia Silidwe, Hong Hatumbalog Maya Sormaya, for now I did that so in Halal's Kinal Chiapas. What you just heard was my indigenous Chiltal Maya language. Um, and I did not have the pleasure to meet Oliver in person. I probably uh, came across with him maybe in any of the of the past year's meetings um, at C Mine, uh, but I definitely, you know, in my, in our traditions with indigenous peoples, we, we, orient and guide our actions and and ways of knowing through our ancestors, through our elders, and in many ways, uh, right now I feel I know. Oliver, uh, from all of your voices and your sharing. And I, it, it fills me with, um, with care and pride that, um, that he and many of your voices like Stephanie's and Michelle's, and, you know, the work that, that you've done really giving space for people of color uh, to find a, a voice and platform in these spaces. As an indigenous woman immigrant um, in the US, 
I found it really challenging to find those spaces. And Sea Mind was one of the first places to trust in my voice. And um, I want by why I'm here, uh, especially by after the, the beautiful performance of, of, of our brother that played the drum, um, it was obvious that Oliver really had the intention to give spaces for our voices. And this is where it has come, that right now there's a voice for indigenous peoples, there's, there's an interest for indigenous contemplative practices. I mean, the, the field is um, welcoming uh, my research and my voice. And that's because of the work of, of people like Oliver. And people that are still here, as, as Stephanie said, he is here. He lives in all of all of these actions and in all of your actions, because you all share that view, that uh, intention of building a community, this community, that we none of us are perfect. We are all in our path to, to growth, but we are trying and we try with authenticity. So thank you so much. I, I, I'm honored to be with you. Many of you uh, I know by name, uh, but not maybe uh, yet by, by hug, by an embrace, a physical embrace, but it will come the time that um, I may, may I share that with, with all of you. Um, so thank you for creating this. I, I believe in C-Mind's um, work. I, I see it as my family. And I'm sure that Oliver wanted this to be a family and wanted this to be a welcoming space for our voices. So thank you so much. Thank you. I just wanted to say, um, well, first of all, uh, I want to acknowledge all of you all and thank you so much for um, for your presence and your beautiful words. I've been touched and moved by all of it. And the thing that comes forward for me right now is um, in Oliver's um, meditation in the very beginning, uh, his practice of this ceremony, this celebration in, in his honor, um, seeing the mantle uh, in his home with pictures of, of his gurus and the plants in the room and just the, the feeling of the atmosphere. And it just took me back to the many times that I had the privilege and honor of being in the home of Oliver and Renee and sharing dinners with them and sharing uh, about you know, our course that we developed together at Virginia State University. I was able to, to teach there with them for a, a couple of years and it was an incredible experience for me. And I also would like to just thank my dear friend, Diane McIntyre, who was the person who introduced me to Oliver and Renee. And um, it was just such a great, a great feeling and, um, I just wanted to, to thank you for choosing that particular practice because it just was like going full, full circle for me and taking me back to that, that place and that time, you know, when I was there in their presence um, in, in Richmond. And uh, it was such a beautiful time. Thank you, Renee. I love you. We have time for maybe three more quick shares. We wanted to play a song at the end, one of Oliver's favorites. So um, if you feel so moved, please jump on in here.
So Oliver just, hi everyone. It's really good to see all of you. I really missed you all. Um, I can't wait to like be in physical space and hug you all. Um, so I didn't work as closely with Oliver as some of you did or um, love as closely, but um, he just, there's just this graciousness that just like, and heart centeredness that just like, when I think of him, that's what I think of. Also, he had the most elegant and gracious hands. I don't know why that stays in my mind, but just like this warmth uh, with which he would hug you and it's just beautiful, just be beautiful being. And I remember, I don't know, I was having one of my really awkward introvert moments at a conference and I was like, I gotta make small talk, but I don't, I hate small talk and I'm not very good with people. And here come Renee and Oliver and Renee is like radiant as she always is and just kind of flowing. And he's elegant and gracious with a little twinkle in his eye. And they, it just felt so warm. And I was like, I can talk to them. <laughs> <laughs> and it just like I just this heart-centered openness and as all of you have said really strong commitment to social justice with a graciousness and a compassion um that I sure as hell haven't been able to access yet but um I'm always aspiring to and I'm really grateful to be in community with you all remembering his presence and continuing to tap into the energy with which he continues to connect with us. Thank you for hosting and organizing this and being here. Hi everyone, uh, I'm Veronica. I wanted to quickly say that um, I was able, I felt honored that I was able to meet uh, Dr. Hill a, a few times. Um, it also, um, during one of my mindfulness studies classes that I teach, I was able to um, play one of his YouTube, uh, brief YouTube meditations and the, some of the, the black men in the space were just really like, oh my gosh, who is this? Like, like, okay, how can I learn more about him? And I just was, and it was maybe about two months after he had transitioned, but I felt so honored to be able to um because they didn't know that that at the time it's like okay let's get into him um but it was it was a much, very much an honor for me to be able to to spread the word to like go back to some of my notes from when I heard him speak and 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 share more uh, about him to continue uh, the legacy of so much of what he did um with young people so um thank you for creating this space I want to just briefly thank you for all of you who worked to organize this, to pull it together. And early today in sort of preparation for this being uh, in the evening, I Googled on Oliver's name and there's an amazing array of things that he's said on YouTube. So I've spent the day uh, listening, not just this is the second time today I've done that meditation. Uh, but there are others too. There is an hour and a half long interview that he did um, for a history, was it for, for the Smithsonian, for the, the Museum of African American History when it opened? It, it was just, um, he was, he's just been so present all day. And I thank you for reminding me that I had the privilege of working with him. So good to see you, Linda. As we listen to this music together, let's take in this interconnected web of being that expands out and up and all around the universe. Let us remember that we are not alone. We are here together on this incredible journey of being.
Maya. Thank you all. Thank you, Renee. Love and appreciation to everyone, to all of you. Renee, I'm waiting on my dinner invitation. Richmond is just down 95. I can be there in a couple of hours. <laughs> Love you all. Thank you.